There's a place where normal labor laws don't apply. A place with no such thing as office hours, where breaks aren't counted in days but in rotations, and where every minute is dictated by the wind, the sea, and machinery that never sleeps. A place cut off from the world, surrounded by steel, noise, and unpredictable storms. Here the sound of the ocean blends with the roar of giant compressors, and the smell of crude oil seeps into every metal corridor. And yet, men and women travel to this isolated outpost to earn salaries that surpass those of doctors, lawyers, and high-level executives. Paychecks with multiple zeros that spark curiosity and imagination, but also hide a cost that almost no one is willing to pay. The question is simple. What does a person have to endure to earn this kind of money? What exactly does someone working in the middle of the ocean do? What skills do they need? How much do they really make? Today we break down the myths and reveal what it truly means to work on an offshore platform, one of the most extreme and complex structures ever created by modern engineering. To understand it, we first need to know what an offshore platform really is. At first glance, it looks like a metal tower rising from the sea. But that's only the facade. A platform is, in essence, an industrial city suspended over the ocean. It is a complete ecosystem operating miles away from the coast, with no immediate support from the outside world. Inside this lattice of steel, electrical systems, desalination units, processing plants, living quarters, laboratories, industrial kitchens, mechanical workshops, and control rooms filled with screens all coexist. Everything is designed to run without failing for weeks at a time. It's a structure that must withstand waves powerful enough to move ships weighing thousands of tons, winds strong enough to bend metal, constant corrosion, relentless vibration, and an environment where absolutely everything from a single bolt to a valve the size of a person, has a critical role. There are different types, fixed platforms anchored to the seabed, semi-submersible platforms that float while stabilizing their weight with massive columns, and the enormous FPSOS, true ship platform hybrids capable of storing everything they produce. All of them share one thing. They exist because the richest reservoirs are no longer on land but buried beneath the ocean floor. That's why the work happens in the middle of the sea because it's the only way to reach those resources. And everything begins long before the first worker ever sets foot on one. For a platform to exist, there are years of calculations and analysis behind it. Engineers study how the sea behaves, how currents move, how winds shift, how deep water pressure acts, and how materials respond under extreme stress. The components are built in massive shipyards and then transported on specialized vessels capable of carrying structures heavier than entire skyscrapers. Those pieces are assembled at sea with the help of crane ships that can hold hundreds of tons in the air while the waves try to knock everything off balance. Securing it to the seafloor requires millimeter level precision. One mistake can cost millions in lost hours. Once it's installed, the most important part begins. Its purpose. What is an offshore platform for? It exists to extract and process a raw material that fuels nearly everything we use. Transportation, industry, energy, manufacturing, chemicals, textiles, machinery, and fertilizers. If these platforms stopped operating, entire supply chains would come to a halt. That's why working here isn't a regular job. It's a role inside the energy backbone of the planet. These platforms are inhabited by specialists. Not just anyone can work here. Drilling engineers operate systems capable of cutting through miles of underwater rock. Instrument technicians calibrate sensors, valves, and equipment that must run with absolute precision. Drill operators monitor pressures and vibrations that can shift in a matter of seconds. Pump and hydraulic specialists keep massive flows moving across the entire structure. Industrial electricians ensure the platform never loses power. Welders work in conditions that simply don't exist on land. And alongside them, cooks, paramedics, cleaning crews, helicopter pilots, and marine support teams keep the entire ecosystem running. The next question is inevitable. What do these people actually do to earn so much? What does a real workday look like out here? The answer surprises anyone who imagines a job with breaks and predictable schedules. On a platform, weekends don't exist. 
There are no slow days. Here you work 12 hours a day for 14, 21 or even 28 consecutive days. The ocean has no schedule and neither does the platform. Each shift means checking control panels that track dozens of variables. Adjusting equipment that must run at the edge of its limits. Maintaining engines that weigh more than a truck. Inspecting massive pipelines. Repairing components at extreme temperatures. Verifying pressures that, if they change even slightly, can shut down the entire operation. And after 12 hours of physical and mental work, rest isn't the kind of rest we imagine. Night in the middle of the sea is a dark abyss with no horizon. The wind slams against the metal. The platform shakes. The noise never stops. Generators, compressors, ventilation, heavy machinery. Sleeping isn't always easy when you share a cabin with other people. And the next day will be identical. Just as demanding, just as long. Despite all the technology, the platform still depends on human discipline. Here, fatigue is an enemy. A miscalculation, a distraction, or a single bad decision can halt an operation that supports entire economies. And now, the question everyone wants answered. How much do people here actually earn? Salaries vary depending on the country, the company, and the level of specialization. But there are averages that help explain the appeal. A specialized technician, such as a drill operator or an instrument technician, can make between four and $8,000 a month while working only half the month. A maintenance or production supervisor can exceed ten or even $12,000. And a senior engineer responsible for drilling or operational integrity can earn between twelve and $18,000 per month. Even support staff, such as cooks or cleaning crews, typically make between $2,500 and $4,500, significantly higher than similar roles on land. Is it a lot of money? Yes. Is it easy to earn? Not at all. Here, the salary isn't paid for the hours worked. It's paid for what it means to live and work in this environment. Why do they earn so much? Because they spend entire weeks in isolation, far from their families. Because they endure storms, constant vibration, humidity and machinery that demands total attention. Because they carry out technical tasks that must be executed with absolute precision. Because they must constantly recertify in safety, first aid, rescue and industrial procedures. But above all, because very few people are willing to live this way. The highest salaries aren't paid for glamour. They're paid for responsibility and sacrifice. Not everyone earns the same. A platform is an ecosystem. Some operate the drill, others cook, others maintain communications or electrical systems. Everyone is necessary, but not everyone is exposed to the same technical demands or risks. Even so, the more basic roles still pay better than their equivalents on land, because in this environment, failure simply isn't an option. Running a platform costs thousands of dollars per day. An unexpected shutdown can cause massive losses and disrupt supply chains across an entire region. That's why companies pay so much. They're not buying time, they're buying stability. They're buying precision. They're paying the few people capable of keeping a gigantic machine running in a place where normal life simply doesn't exist. But what almost no one mentions is the human cost. Isolation takes a toll. The noise wears you down. Routine fractures you little by little. Personal relationships cool off. The body tires. The mind hardens, sometimes more than it should. It's money well earned, yes, but never earned for free. It's paid with absence, accumulated fatigue, identical days, starless nights, and a kind of loneliness only understood by those who have been in the middle of the ocean. And now the question is for you. Could you live entire weeks at sea for a salary like this? So the next time you hear that people on offshore platforms make a fortune, remember this. That money isn't a prize or a stroke of luck. It's an exchange. An exchange between extreme engineering, complex logistics, absolute responsibility and total isolation. An exchange that keeps one of the most essential machines on the planet running.